So we left off um, right basically here with our um, cube and sphere coll colliding animation. And we've got this kind of thing. And, and that's all good and fine. But at the same time, um, if you take a look, one of the nice things about going into the animation uh, window here, let's uh, go full screen here, is that you should by default right over here, and you can kind of see a little bigger here, get your camera view. Okay, and as you animate, it's going to show you what's going you know what's going to happen. But now this might be okay for some of you, but it's not okay for me, and it's really not okay when you think about creating an animation for a movie or something like that. Um, we're very used to the fact that in movies, cameras constantly are moving, it gives a sense of a kinetic world. Very, very, it's very rare that a camera just stays still for long periods of time, okay? You either cut to a new camera or the camera is in motion. And I always love that uh, fact that you can animate a camera in Blender and you can animate it just like you can animate anything else. So if I just take uh, <coughs> the camera here, so let's just give myself a little more room here. So I can just take the camera here and I can do something very similar where let's say I just want to uh, move it. Okay, so I can have it start here like on the cube and then it can go a little bit further. Um, I need to see a little bit of the animation here. And let's say it ends right about here. I can have it move like this and maybe back a little bit. Okay, and I can also, um, you know, so hit, oops, see, I didn't hit I. So here I hit I, location, rotation, scale. And then I go forward and nothing happens because I forgot to hit I. So then we go back here and we can start on the cube. Now what's interesting about this, let's just see if this works. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it kind of follows the cube. That's kind of cool. But at the same time, you know what? Simple camera motions, they're fun. I mean, you know, just move it in a straight line. But it get, can get kind of complicated to actually have the camera follow something. Now, we can actually point the camera at an object and tell the camera to follow that object. So, just for instance, let's have the camera follow our cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Let's just close that a little bit here. I'm going to go over here. I've got the camera selected. I'm going to go over to my mod or my constraints. I always get the two confused. And there is one called track two. So I can choose that. And then I'm going to write, or I'm going to click here, and it's going to ask me what I want it to track to, and I'm going to select the cube. Now, an interesting and kind of weird thing happens this way, and the camera now is pointing straight down. Okay? You have to configure your axes here what is up, what is down, and so on and so forth. Now, with the camera, Usually up should be Y, okay, the Y axis. Not, I'm not completely sure why the Y axis is up, but it is. And now what we can do is we can take a look at, and you can kind of see how the camera just keeps pointing at the cube. Now what I was expecting to have happen and didn't is I was expecting the camera to like jerk. But the reason why the camera didn't jerk a lot was because it's still moving and then the, cam the cube moves in <laughs> happily, nice happy accident, in the same, almost the same axis as the camera's pointing. So if you look really carefully, you can see a faint blue line right there, okay? So we can see how the, the, the cube is almost moving almost along that axis so the camera doesn't jerk around like I was expecting it to. However, if we were to point the, the camera to the sphere, Oh, well, partially because I didn't set that correctly either. Ah, there we go. So the, it needs to be set to negative Z. You can see how now when it's hitting, let's move the camera a little closer here. So I'm going to take my camera's keyframes and I'm going to drag it in to, so that it matches the others. Okay, so now the camera's going to finish its motions, and now you can see how the camera kind of bounces with the sphere. I think that would create kind of an odd visual, okay? 
I think that, you know, the camera's, you know, moving around with, in, in sync with the sphere. It's one thing to add a vibration to the camera. That can be cool because it can, you know, signify that the ground is moving or, you know, that you can do. Um, but having it kind of slide around with the objects, generally not what you want. So what we can do, and this is a nice technique here, is we can actually take this um, uh, track tool and we can go up to the add menu and we can say we want to add an empty object. An empty is an invisible object and they're used for a lot of things. Okay, we use an empty object uh, basically in flash. Remember I called them helpers or empties, but we made those transparent um, objects that we put at the ends of the hands and the feet with our skeletal system to kind of give you more control over the wrists, okay? Empties are really good for a lot of things. Um, some animations call them nulls, N-U-L-L, -L, okay? That basically means it's a zero, right? Null is a mathematical term. But at the same time, here, it means something a little different. But before I add it, I'm going to make sure that my little plus symbol is in the right place. So seven, then hit the three, get rid of perspective. I'm just going to put, I'm going to put this right in the center as best as possible. So now, now that I've got that set up, I'm going to go up and I'm going to add the empty. And then I'm going to go to my um, object menu here, and instead of calling it empty, I'm going to call it the camera target. Okay, so that gives it a nicer name. And I'm going to right click on my camera again. We're going to go back to our modifiers, and our target here, we're going to change to that camera target. Now, it doesn't look like much changed here, but now you can see that the camera is pointed straight at the middle. Now, if I started to animate the, the target, then I can introduce a little change. But you know what? It's, sometimes it's best just to leave things well enough alone. So I'm going to go back to my keyframe here. I'm going to pull the camera back a little bit until we can see both objects. I'm going to reinsert my keyframe. And now you can see I've built a really nice, simple camera motion into this and it's always going to point at that null object um, or at that empty but we're not done that's cool and that modifier is really great so that's a, that's a fun thing but what I really want to do now is we're going to add a motion path to our camera okay ooh dun 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 okay but we're going to uh, we'll, we'll do that in a second I'm going to divide these into two things okay so, there we go. So that's basically the track two modifier. Is there any questions about that at all? Track two modifier, okay? It's pretty simple. The major thing before I end this, the major thing about the track two modifier is you want to make sure that you have 99% of the time, if you want the camera to be pointing at your object specifically and tracking with it, you need to have the camera set the target two on the negative Z axis and the up set to the Y axis. That's not the case with all objects. By the way, you can do this with any object. This track two modifier works with all sorts of objects, not just cameras. So for instance, if you're building a, um, a character and he's got eyeballs, right? And you want his eyeballs to swivel with what he's looking at, put a, an empty out in front of the object and you can move them in and out. And what's cool is then you can make your, your character go cross-eyed. Right? I mean, if something gets really close to somebody, that's what they do. If you watch, their eyes do get slowly, get a little bit closer and closer and closer, and then you can go cross-eyed really hard. But you can actually control that really simply just by the track two object. The axes settings would be different possibly, but at the same time, the basic principle is the same. It's really cool. Okay? All right.